This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Toyota's former president and CEO and current chairman Akio Toyota loves gas-burning engines. But with the shift to electrification, there's cases where engine-related suppliers can't borrow money from a bank. He says that shouldn't happen, and he wants to do something about it. So Akio made a proposal to current president and CEO Koji Sato and other members of management to start a project to promote engine development and refine technology. They agreed, and much of what we're seeing from Toyota at the Tokyo Auto Show, which just kicked off, is a reflection of its desire to offer a wide range of powertrains. The most exciting example is the new GR Yaris. The car's turbocharged 1.6-liter three-cylinder engine already made an impressive 268 horsepower, but that's been boosted even more to 300 horsepower. It also has more torque and gets a newly developed eight-speed automatic transmission. The last highlight of the GR Yaris is a new interior that's much more driver focused and the dash looks like something you'd find in a race car. Other vehicles on display include a performance concept version of the Lexus LBX, which has a toned down version of the GR Yaris's engine, an F Sport Performance Lexus RZ450E, which will be limited to 100 examples in Japan and features a cornucopia of wings, spoilers, and diffusers. It showed an off-road concept version of the new Lexus GX that's just about to go on sale. And lastly is a GR version of the new Toyota Century, which almost looks like a Bentley or Rolls-Royce SUV to us. Attacks on ships containing auto parts in the Red Sea by militant groups is disrupting production for several automakers. Tesla announced it's suspending most production at its Berlin plant for about two weeks at the end of the month because of a shortage of components. Volvo announced it's halting production for three days next week at its plant in Belgium due to the situation. And while Volkswagen says it doesn't expect significant production delays, it says it's monitoring the situation closely. The automakers are being forced to reroute the ships to avoid being attacked, which is causing delays and a shortage of parts. And we won't be surprised to see more automakers impacted by the situation. But circling back to Tesla's Berlin plant, it's going to drive most of the growth in production capacity in Germany this decade. According to a study by consultant and market research firm Burials, production in Germany will hit 5.2 million units by 2030, up from 4.3 million last year. Tesla is expected to help German capacity increase 2.5% per year by the end of the decade. And the reason Tesla will account for much of the growth is because German automakers aren't making plans to boost production in their home country. France has already started its own probe into Chinese EVs to see if they benefit too much from EU subsidies. And now Reuters reports that investigators at the European Commission are doing the same. They're going to visit with BYD, Geely, and SAIC in the coming weeks but the probe could last until the fourth quarter of this year. However, if they find the Chinese automakers are getting too much of an advantage, since their EVs cost about 20% less than EU-made models, the commission could slap tariffs on Chinese EVs. In the case of France, it's using total production emissions to go after Chinese automakers, and we could see the European Commission using that same criteria. Ultimately, They're worried about Chinese EVs having a negative impact on the European automakers. And right now, Chinese EV market share is expected to nearly double in the next two years, from about 8% today to 15% by the end of 2025. Sustainability is a big focus of the auto industry, and Ford is expanding its efforts in that area. Every year, 7 million tons of waste is created from pruning olive trees. So Ford engineers in Germany are testing parts made from that waste in vehicles. It's producing prototype parts that consist of 40% olive tree waste, like twigs and branches, 
and 60% recycled polypropylene plastic. The mixture is heated and injected molded into different components. Ford says that early tests show the parts are durable and capable of being used in its cars. But no word yet on if these parts will make their way into Ford's production vehicles. Stellantis is placing its bets on several different battery technologies to help meet its EV sales goals. The automaker has already partnered with Factorial Energy on solid-state batteries and Lighten to develop lithium sulfur ones. Now the automaker is investing in a French-based company called Tiamet that's developing sodium ion batteries. Sodium ion batteries are lower cost due to the abundance of sodium and they offer better performance in low temperatures and faster charging capability. However, they're not nearly as energy dense as a lithium ion battery. There's going to be a lot more standardization in battery swapping, meaning one battery will fit into a number of different vehicles. NEO just signed up two more automakers to help build out its swapping business, which brings its total to four. On top of recent announcements with Geely and Chang'an, it also has deals with Cherry and JAC to build models and stations, as well as set battery swapping standards. NEO says it plans to build a thousand more swapping stations this year in China, which would bring its total to over 3,000. Israeli startup REE Automotive is the first company to receive U.S. certification for a fully bi-wire vehicle platform. REE's architecture combines the motors, steering, suspension, and brakes into one unit that's placed at the corners, which allows it to be used with a number of different body styles. By wire means there's no mechanical connection between control mechanisms. It's all electronic. And it has started delivering one of those vehicles, the P7C commercial van to customers in the U.S. for testing purposes. And it will deliver more over the next few weeks. The vehicle qualifies for a federal tax credit of up to $40,000, and with state incentives, that could push the total to hundred grand. Car rental company Hertz made all kinds of headlines when it announced it was going to buy a huge lineup of electric vehicles. But it's been a bit of a disaster, and now Hertz is going to sell off a third of its EV fleet and buy ICE vehicles instead. The company began selling EVs last month and hopes to offload 20,000 by the end of the year. Hertz has previously said it lost a lot of value in its EV fleet when automakers, mainly Tesla, began slashing prices, and it said its EV maintenance and repair costs are much higher than ICE vehicles. Throw in a softening market for EVs, and you can see why Hertz wants to unload some of its electrics. Is the Detroit Auto Show trying to make itself irrelevant? It sure feels that way. After the 2019 show, organizers decided to move the show to the summer, mostly due to competition with CES. But the 2020 Detroit show was canceled because of the pandemic. The following year, it was kind of canceled again, but a makeshift show called Motor Bella was held in its place in September. Organizers stuck with the month of September for the last two years. But now they're going back to January again. The 2025 Detroit Auto Show will take place on January 10th to 20th, which is right on the heels of CES. And if you're a bit confused, don't worry. So are we. But that's a wrap for this show and this week. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope that you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. At CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and Zornal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10-base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall booth 3666 or visit intrepidcs.com sales. 
At Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.